All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the next in a series of our webinar training. Um, this week we are going to be looking at families uh, and family adventures that can be had. Um, two weeks ago we covered the health and wellness and if you missed that one then um, I will send you the link so that you can actually watch it. Um, and this one is also being recorded so you can watch it again. So if you're feverishly taking notes, don't worry too much. I'll send you some follow-up information as well. So. As mentioned a couple of weeks ago, is it Jersey? Uh, pleased to announce that Jersey is open. Um, on Friday the 3rd of July, we eased the travel restrictions, which meant that Jersey has opened its borders. And because it's part of the, uh, the, the quarantine with rules within the UK, there's no need to quarantine on your return either, unless of course you are showing symptoms. Um, there's an infographic in the center here, which I will send around to all of you. But this just explains quite simply um, what's involved for passengers when they do arrive. Uh, quite simply, they just have a test on arrival that's given to them for free. Um, and whilst they're waiting for those results, we ask them to um, adhere to social distancing rules. They don't have to stay in their room or anything else, but social distancing practices, which we have in place here um, as well. And then once they get their results, then they're free to enjoy this day as they wish. So throughout today's um, webinar, I will be talking about certain attractions and restaurants and hotels. Not all of these are open right now. To get the up-to-date information, please do go to Visit Jersey as uh, a website, which is jersey.com, um, and then we'll have the latest information. On the right-hand part of this screen, you'll see where we were communicating during the lockdown period, but this Jersey at Home has some great content which you are free to use and to watch, including Will Holland's uh, cookery tips on how to cook some of the delights that you find in Jersey. Now, to get you in the mood of Jersey, again, I've got a nice video to start. This one is our new video, which we launched. You might have seen it, I've sent it around to some of you already, um, but this is what we're happy for you to share and promote Jersey for about the Jersey borders opening. In Jersey, we are ready to give you a warm welcome. Because your health and well-being is our top priority, come find peace with us. Or we'll simply reunite with loved ones again in a crowd-free environment. There's just a short flight or calming sea crossing away. Just far enough to feel worlds apart, but close enough to feel assured. Because it's time to come up for air, to take your first breath with confidence, to reconnect with nature and blow the cobwebs away, to discover unsport beaches, dive into turquoise waters, ride miles of open roads, explore diverse landscapes, and taste the things you've only been dreaming of with like-minded people. Discover why we're known as a little island with a big spirit. So you can see from the video that it's not just the absolute beauty of the island, but also its incredible diversity um, that attracts people to come along. And in fact, we've actually been named uh, within TripAdvisor's top 10 best rated destinations in the UK and Channel Islands, which we're very proud of. But how we describe Jersey is, is the island break. Um, it means it's more than just a city break and a beach break or a countryside break. It's all of those things combined. Um, you have the best of all those elements within a short flight time of less than an hour. Um, whether you want history, relaxation, adventure, food, we find that Jersey is the perfect base uh, for families looking for a great trip away uh, to reconnect with each other. Now in this presentation, I'm gonna cover some of the fantastic options for families of all ages, including uh, activities, adventures, and accommodation options. Now, a quick overview again, um, for those who saw last week, sorry for repeating, um, but Jersey is located 137 kilometers south of Britain and 20 kilometers off the French coast. You don't need a passport or visa to get to Jersey from the UK, just identification. Same time zone, so there's no jet lag for the children, which is great. Um, it's familiar enough to the UK, but also a little bit different as well, which is quite unique and uh, wonderful, which is what people want from a holiday. 
Now the entire island of Jersey is just nine miles by five, which means you're never more than 10 minutes by the, uh, from the sea. Um, and we like to say we are a small island with a big spirit. Now you can travel to the UK uh, either by plane or by, by ferry. Um, and the carriers that go there are BA, EasyJet, Blue Islands. And of course we have Condor ferries who uh, travel twice a day either on the fast one, which is four and a half hours or eight hours for the overnight ferry. Now, little island, but we've got big adventures here. So Jersey's jam packed with adventures for children of all ages, and it makes it the perfect destination for families. Um, and we're gonna look at a few today um, and starting off with some of these. So the top left hand picture you see, you've got Double Wildlife Conservation Trust, but otherwise known now as Jersey Zoo. It has had a rebrand and a change of name over the years, so you might know it as different things, but this stunning 32 acre park has got lots of valleys and woodland and some of the world's rarest animals, um, and it's become known as the jewel in Jersey's crown. Now you may know it from Gerald Double off the ITTV drama, The, the Doubles, um, and for families, it's fantastic. Obviously, the children love the wildlife. Uh, they're fascinated by animals, but why not get them to experience a little bit more? There are some different experiences that you can book for families, including Ape Encounter, a meerkat experience where they can get up close and personal to meerkats, or they can even become a zookeeper for the day and they can fully immerse themselves into that world and see what it's like. Um, that sounds great to me. Um, there's also Amazing Adventure Park. So this is a top right hand picture, just given uh, an indication there. Now it's located on the west coast of the island. Now this is the perfect attraction for families from a, a, a young age effectively, um, going up to the, the, the teenager age group. They've got dozens of activities included within the entrance fee. And so you don't have any hidden charges throughout, which is very important. And it's a great mix of outdoor and indoor activities. So if the weather is not on your side, which sometimes we know it's not when you don't travel too far, then there are plenty of things to do. In outside is toboggan rides, gold mines, there's go-karts, jumping pillows, tractor rides. Um, but there's also inside they have um, some some intro, you know, fun and games that they can enjoy as well. Um, I recommend the scary drop slide. Um, I thought that I was quite brave until I went there and tried it out. I thought, yeah, that's not too bad until you stand at the top and then there's a long way down, but it's great fun. Um, there you go, I'll just show that I'm, an, I'm a child at, at heart here. So we've also got Jump Jersey. So that's the bottom left-hand side. So Jump Jersey is the island's newest and biggest activity centre, um, which is based at Les Ormes. Um, now Les Ormes is also a great self-catering um, resort which is perfect for families but the um, Jump Jersey is a trampoline park they have climbing walls soft play area the laser light show um, basically it's a great place for, for kids to, to run wild uh, and you know use up all that energy that they do have and outside um, just down the road from there there's Valley Adventure Centre otherwise previously known as Creepy Valley because um, the name of the valley is called Creepy Valley but Valley Adventures uh, basically has the only high rope adventure um, park in the whole island. As you can see from that picture there, it's all high wires um, and obstacle courses to really test um, the, the skill and nerve uh, and, and everything with the children of all ages. They do some great deals for families all together. Adults and children can go here and they also do parties as well. Um, and they have a great, um, zip wire that goes down um, and they as well as that they do archery, uh, climbing, abseiling, back paintball, laser combat and so much more. So again these are just a snapshot of some of the activities that can be done in Jersey um, really to tire the children out effectively because um, it makes life a lot easier for parents doesn't it. So Oops, sorry. Jersey's basically got a fantastic coastline um, and so there's lots of adventures to be had along the, the spectacular coast. So parents of teenagers know that it's hard to keep them entertained all day uh, and mainly keep them away from their mobile telephones and devices. 
But Jersey has a great way of doing that uh, by giving them real life adventures and memories that last a lifetime and they make new friends and friendships whether they're doing joint activities they enjoy. Some of the great things that can be done here are with a company called Jersey Adventures. Now they um, specialize in coast rearing, um, abseiling, climbing and kayaking. So all the fun adrenaline activities that really get close to nature um, and on the open seas. So Jersey Adventures is the longest serving adventure and activity center in the Channel Islands. They're based in St. Martin um, and they have a mobile operation um, where they have stand up paddle boarding, kayaking, and they also do blow carting. So the top right hand picture you see there, um, it's land sailing effectively. Um, and they go to many different sites which are perfect for the activity that they are conducting, whether it's abseiling, rock climbing, bushcraft as well. Um, so it's, it's a fantastic way to explore Jersey's coastline. There's also a unique um, opportunity to see Jersey from the sea, um, but with the rib boat coasteering. So this is the best experience on water by far in Jersey. And basically you're taken by rib um, from St. Bernard's Bay to, to Gore's Lands. And it's one of Jersey's best coasteering locations. Um, you spend time jumping in and exploring the caves and it includes that rib ride uh, as well to access that location. So it's effectively two fun experiences all in one. And you've also got Jersey Sea Sports as well, who offer jet ski tours for the older um, teenager, really. Now, not everything is high octane and crazy. Um, we do have some more serene um, and sedate uh, activities, such as nice walks and surf lessons and paddle boarding and family friendly beaches. So I'm going to be covering a few of those moving forwards now. So you can be an adventurer at any age really. Um, and the best way for kids to really ignite their imagination is by going on walks and going back to nature and discovering all the wildlife that's around them and being amazed. And we're so lucky in Jersey because we've got an abundance of great walks all around. You can actually walk out of your hotel, wherever you're staying, and take a walk, say hello to a few of the, local, uh, the locals that are there, and then you will find a fantastic walk on your doorstep. But if you want to have more of a planned route, then you'll see some that I could talk about now, which one of them is uh, St. Catherine's Wood, so the top right hand side there. So you basically have great walk, which you can take your buggies, but I mean, some of the paths do get a bit, um, a, a bit difficult with some tree roots and streams to cross. So it's not all of the path routes are great for push chairs, but it is possible. Um, so it's a chance to see nature up close um, and the, the kids will love the little stepping stones over the rivers um, and to explore a little bit further, especially when the bluebells all come out in the spring. So we've also got Queen's Valley Reservoir. So this is more of a serene, calming, influent, peaceful location inland. Um, and you wander around the reservoir in the heart of Jersey countryside with beautiful waterside views all along. So there are trees to clamber on and ducks and geese to spot. So the little ones will really enjoy exploring around that area. Now the left hand route when you go there is great for push chairs and it has a relatively flat and wide path. Um, there's also a shorter loop that you can do or you can actually decide to walk around the whole reservoir which is a longer walk. So depending for what you're up for. And then you've got the railway walk. Now, if you want to get your pole speeding a bit faster, then pick supplies up from the shops and delicatessen at St. Albans Village and then follow the tracks on what was once a railway. So now it's a favourite walk for walkers and cyclists. Um, it's a tree lined railway walk uh, which leads from the village through the woodland all the way to Corbier Lighthouse, which is the top left hand picture that you see there. Now, what we recommend is you get that that last push for to get that bit of fresh air you need to come up a bit of a hill so it's the last hill section there and you finish at elephant park effectively with its kids play area sandpit and cafe as well so you can have a well-earned drink afterwards you've also got um more of a metropolitan and coastal walk that you can do um, which is saint oban's uh, promenade so you can pack up your push chair for a day out this is a beautifully flat and wide uh, walk that walks alongside the promenade uh, along the seafront at St. Oban's Bay and there's plenty of places to stop for a paddle in the waves or to stop for a drink maybe at the, the Gunside Cafe 
um, and you can end up at Millbrook Park where the, the children can also let off steam with some other children in the play areas that are there. They've also got a paddling pool and ice cream kiosks because we all want ice cream after a walk, don't we? So for those slightly older children, um, why not try surfing or paddle boarding lessons? So surfing, as I, I hinted before, previous time, uh, a couple of weeks ago, that Jersey has some of the best waves in the UK and they've been teaching the world to surf since the first surf school uh, in Europe back in 1914. It's warmed by the Gulf Stream and powered by the Atlantic. So there's no better rush than paddling out uh, on the clean ocean to, to catch a wave. And it's a great skill for the youngsters to learn all together. And when you're learning a new skill together, you, you create a bond with people you're learning with. So um, to, to create friendships that last a long time. Now, there are plenty of surf schools on the island. Uh, many of them are in St. Peter. Uh, so check out Splash Surf Centre. Um, there's also Surf Yard and Little Joe's Shop and Surf School, uh, to name just a few. Uh, they can also rent out equipment hire for those people who can also already surf or just want to have a play. Now afterwards, we recommend they head to Water Splash, uh, which is basically Jersey's most consistent and famous surf break. And it's one of the coolest destinations for beach life. Um, so it's, think Summer Bay, uh, home and away with the, uh, with the um, surf club. Uh, cafe that's similar to what water splash is and in the evening time you get to watch some fantastic sunsets go there now if you make sure you check the surf report and we do have that on jersey.com as well now paddle boarding is also becoming a very popular craze so whatever you want to call it it's got different names it could be paddle surfing stand up it could be paddle surfing uh supping uh sup surfing beach boy surfing it's loads of names um, but, but ultimately, it's a great serene adventure. So you can see what that is in the bottom left-hand picture here. So you've got big boards, which are make, they're very stable for people to, to enjoy. If you tried it yourself and you kept on falling in, you probably had a smaller board. Um, my recommendation, ask for a big, long one. Um, it helped me. Now, as well as going out and exploring the coastline um, and building adventures up, you can also take part in fitness classes. There's yoga classes on Pilates, all taking place on top of the uh the paddle boards which i found it difficult standing up let alone trying to do downward dog on top of one of those things as well um it's a great place you can actually go paddle boarding from all over the island from east to west north to south um and there's lots of people that have that on offer as well now family friendly beaches um people love going to the beach kids especially um and so We've got plenty of beaches on the island and they're all family friendly, to be honest. Um, but we picked some of our family favourites to just to narrow down the options. So you can give your clients the best option and recommendations um, to make it easier. So the top of our list has to go to St. Brelad's Bay. Uh, this is set in a beautiful location and it was the in the top three best beaches in the UK and Channel Islands as well. Um, so it's good reason um, why I'm recommending it to you now. The views are stunning. It's got beautiful, soft, clean golden sand and crystal clear water and gentle waves as well, which is what you need with the children around. There's plenty of parking across the road, which makes it easy to access uh, with, with, all your, um, with all your towels and all the other bits and pieces that you need um, when you're taking the day to the, to the, to the beach. Um, alternatively, if you don't have a car, it's very accessible with the public transport as well. There's lots of buses that go by at uh, regular intervals. Now, the bay itself has an abundance of restaurants and cafes and bars, and Pizza Expresses, they've got, I think they've got crab shacks, they've got lots of places where you can buy items for um, the beach as well. They've got uh, safe swimming and they have a presence of the RNLI lifeguard during the summer, which means it's a great one that you can highly recommend to your clients with, with no worries. Uh, another beach entirely is on the east coast um, and that's Have to Pass. Now this is the closest beach to the centre of St Helier, the capital. It's literally a 10 minute walk through the stunning Howard Davis Park really. Now this beach is a sunny and sheltered um, little hideaway and it's southeast faced in and it's got a fabulous man-made tidal pool there called the Lido. Now this Lido has been there for many, many years. And if you go in there into the cafe part of the Lido, you'll see on top of the bar, they've got all of these pictures through the history um, of how the Lido looked. So 
it's worth going there just to see all that. Now the pool is replenished with each tide and so you are swimming in natural seawater but with the safety and confines of the actual swimming pool. There's also a children's pool there is avail available as well. And so something different again in the top right hand side you've got Plymouth Beach. Now this is a great exploration for children because it's a sandy cove on the west northwestern tip of the island and it's got many rock pools and fascinating sea caves to explore and even a fresh water waterfall. Now we've it's a great photograph if you're taking your camera it's an instagrammable moment for sure. Now Plymouth is uh, an excellent cafe with toilets and safe bathing. When the sea's calm it's excellent surfing when it isn't calm um, and it's rarely too crowded. So make sure you do check the tidal range that time um, because you want to go there at low tide. At high tide, the beach is covered, you can't access the caves and you'll see people can still go there but they'll end up being on the rocks. Um, and that's also where the RNLI lifeguards are based during the summer months. So it is a great place to explore. Now the bottom right hand picture here is just for me to show you, this is known in Jersey as a crowded beach. So I know the pictures that we've been seeing in the media here about the beaches in the UK, and there's some kinds of concerns about people going to the beach because there's a lots of things to do in Jersey and there's plenty of beaches there. The bottom right end picture is generally how busy you see the beaches. So you can go to Jersey and relax and know that you're going to be the safe hands. Now I'm going to touch a little bit on history now and now we do have a history webinar coming up so I won't go into too much detail but what I would like to go and explore would be some history which would be great for kids because history and children are not usually the best of combo um, but Jersey makes learning fun um, and makes learning history fun so what Jersey castles for example are a great way for the family to explore together uh, the adults can enjoy the history and uh, looking at the architecture and such while the children can reenact battles and really use their imagination so we have three castles in Jersey um, the two ones that uh, are more prominent are the Elizabeth Castle which is accessible at low tide by foot or you can actually get to Jersey both at low tide and high tide using the castle ferry which will transport you to and from the bay and that's on the top right hand picture just there you'll see that amphibious vehicle there coming in the kids love going on that because it's it goes on land and on water going across the way there um, so when kids are uh, within the uh, Elizabeth castle they can explore the different battlements that date back to the 1590s uh, and they can explore the turrets and bunkers and discover the Hermitage where St. Helio is thought to have lived around 550 AD. So they can take a stroll to the end of the breakwater as well, um, and that extends 1.5 miles out to sea. So that's quite a walk. We've also got Mount Orgai Castle on the west coast, east coast, sorry, um, and that's protected, that castle's protected Jersey against the French invasion over 600 years ago. Um, and they've got plenty of places for the children to explore plus they've also got some great props as well when they arrive so children get given wooden swords and shields to really help get in the spirit of things and help with their learning and you'll see them um, on the top here on the left hand side um, on the battlements we've also got jersey maritime museum the bottom right hand side here um we can discover all about Jersey's maritime past in its great interactive museum. It's really cleverly put together. It's inside as well, so it's a great rainy day alternative. Um, and it's set within the historic harbour of St. Helier, so it's very central. Now it's all about seafaring, navigation, and the elements told through the stories of the Jersey people. Um, and so the interactive exhibits really give them the feel of, a, for example, the, there's one part there which is like a gale force uh, force of a gale uh, comes out and blows at you uh, and so it really like takes the wind out of your, of your lungs it's, it's, it's amazing and really puts you right in the heart of it all we've also got jersey war tunnels um, so this tells the story of the wartime in jersey in a way that no other visitor attraction really can um, it's a great place to get a picture of what life was really like in jersey during world war ii where the channel islands were the only part of the british Isles that was invaded by nazi germany now uh, the exhibition is housed within an underground tunnel complex. Um, it was built by Nazi Germans using slave labour. 
Um, and in, in addition to the exhibition, there's also a beautiful uh, war trail and garden of reflection that people can spend time in, um, as well as the visitor centre and gift shop, which is, it's, you take a step back in time when you go to this, uh, this cafe. Um, so you've got some beautiful cakes that are there on offer, but it's, you, you, you step back into 1940s. It's really something to be experienced. We've also got uh, Hampton Museum, which is basically dating back to the 15th century. It's a house and working farm um, that gives visitors a unique insight to Jersey rural life. And so it's great for um, the children to go out into the orchard and meet with the, the, the different calves and piglets and other animals in this beautiful uh, farmstead. So again, it's that hands-on interactive experience. And of course, you've got Corbier Lighthouse, um, which is a beautiful walk, which you saw the picture of when we're talking about the walk-in. Um, but you can actually walk out to Corbier Lighthouse and have a look around that. And it's accessible during low tide. So make sure you do check the tide times before you do go. Now, we're going to just touch upon some places to eat and drink, which is good for families. Now, the picture you see here is actually at Radisson Blue. Um, so the cafe there right in the marina. But the truth is there are, um, there is all the restaurants uh, affected in Jersey are family friendly. Um, none of them are turning children away at all. But again, I've picked a few out so you can recommend to your clients. Um, it does sound a bit trite when I say that uh, virtually all the restaurants are great for kids, but it's true. Um, so the top left hand picture is the Priory Inn. And this is one of Jersey's oldest inns but they've recently undergone a major refurbishment to include the Little Devils Kids Party Zone. So this independent play zone will keep the kids entertained while the rest of the family can enjoy extensive menus and the lovely drinks on offer, including the Jersey Liberation Ale, which is highly recommended by me. Now the location of this is actually um, in the North Coast, and this is also the, 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 um, the, the location of the car park, this, uh, this um, restaurant and bar. It's uh, the great base to go when you're going for a walk along the, the National Trust uh, coastline path, which also goes to the Devil's Hole. So it'll be a great way to combine a beautiful walk along the coast, go to the Devil's Hole, and then come and have a drink and some food, and the kids can play in there. Now, of course, with miles of beautiful sand in St. Mons Bay, um, and with the home of all the surfers, it's going to have some great places to eat and drink. So after the kids have had their surf lessons, um, then why not finish your, the, the day or the afternoon with uh, a, a drink and some food at El Tico, which is the bottom right-hand picture there. It's a fantastic place. It's got an eclectic menu. This menu is varied beyond belief. So even if the little ones are fussy eaters and it's very difficult to please them most of the time, there will be something on this menu for everyone. They do everything from mules marinere or to a curry to fish and chips to, uh, you know, it's just, it's just such a random mix, but they, the food quality is amazing. It's I've not, never had a bad meal. Um, we've also got Green Island Restaurant and Beach Hut, uh, which is a popular beachside eatery for locals and visitors in the know. Um, they specialise in fresh local seafood and it's like a Mediterranean influence, which is evident through the decor and the ambience and, and style of cooking as well. Now it's located at the top of the slipway at Green Island and it boasts uninterrupted views out to sea on the front Sundance Terrace. Um, and it's a relaxed dining experience, where you, whether you're having it al fresco on the terrace or if you're actually dining in the restaurant. And one of my favourites uh, is Portlet Bay Cafe on the doorstep of the beach. And you can enjoy food, uh, food, wood fired pizzas under the evening sky. Uh, and so that's the, the picture there um, on the top right. Now, moving on to accommodation. So what is the best family hotel in Jersey? Well, it depends really on what kind of family you are, what, where on the island you want to stay, and what you're, what you're, what you're into really. Um, so you'll find a great options of family friendly hotels um, with a pool uh, located in St. Helier in the capital. So whether you choose to stay, stay in the heart of the town in the friendly, family friendly hotels, such as the Hampshire, the Monterey, or the Apollo, um, or you can choose to stay a little bit out of town to at a family friendly marina, the Radisson Blue, with the picture we saw just now. Or you could even stay in historic Havde Pass in the Omeroo, 
uh, or Hotel Normandy, which is just opposite the Lido that we saw earlier. Um, and we've also got um, the, the family bolt hole, which is the Merton Hotel. Now this is near to Howard Davis Park in St. Helier, so it's really close to uh, all the action. And the, the Merton Hotel has an unbeatable range of hotel facilities for families. Um, this includes indoor, outdoor pools, entertainment, and much more. The two pictures on the top here are from the Merton Hotel as well. So it's got a flume ride inside the indoor pool, and they've also got a wave rider um, for people to learn the surfing skills, which is great for adults and children. If you if you aren't decided, uh, and the, the, there's a whole family in front of you wanting to book, they just show the kids these pictures, and that's it. That pest of power will get them to book straight away. And if it's something a little bit different, you can choose to stay at the glamping site located at Jersey Zoo, which is the bottom pictures. So this unique experience will have you waken up to the sound of the wild animals in the morning, but the tents have proper beds, the full size shower and a kitchen. And also you get free access to the zoo during your stay. So going back to what I mentioned with Jersey Zoo, uh, it really is one of those unique experiences. And just to segue into the last video now i'm just going to play you uh, a short video about jersey zoo from one of the zookeepers Islands are special places. They tend to harbour a lot of rare species naturally because of their unique habitats. It's one of the reasons why Gerald Durrell chose Jersey and when you're here you feel that. Being on the island of Jersey makes Durrell more of a community, an island within an island. There's a family feel to it. It was a natural fit for me. I've always loved the wild and nature. All the animals are individuals with their own little traits, particularly the great apes. They're so close to people that you naturally get attached and want to make their lives pleasant. Our enclosures are open and create environments that are very close to their natural habitats. We want people to reconnect with nature, to become more conservation minded. I feel incredibly lucky to be so close to them. They're the reason we do what we do. For such a small island, it has a lot crammed into it. And if you want to make use of it, then all you have to do is get outdoors and enjoy it. Meet some of the rarest primates on the planet. Visit Jersey. So that was just a small glimpse of Jersey Zoo there. Um, of course, if you need any more information, you have my contact information, but jersey.com uh, has lots of recommendations and we do have great ideas and itineraries for families as well. We also have a trade site, which is business.jersey.com. And on there, we've got, again, more um, itineraries that are good for you to use, as well as some any content that you wish to have, including some video and photographic content. We have our, our links to the uh, social channels that we have, as well as our Island Break hashtag, which we encourage everybody to use when they can. Anything you need, let us know, we're here to help you. And to remind you that the series continues. So the next one will be in two weeks, where we'll be talking about luxury Jersey uh, and the luxury experiences that can be had as well. So all that's left today, thank you very much for listening um, and I look forward to seeing you all in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you.